Greetings everyone, and welcome to Anime Night in the Dojo. Today's featured show, Tomo-chan is a girl. Yes, Tomo-chan is a girl, season one, episode seven. Welcome back to the Dojo. I'm Ryu, he's Age. We're back from our Anime Night in the Dojo, and uh, I'm still kind of super dead. Uh, sorry for being a day late on everything this week again, um, but that's what happens when you're dealing with trying to prevent your house from flooding and being up for... 52 hours straight i think i was at some point i was uh, i lost like most of my weekend it was terrible but uh yes. yeah tomochan stuff's happening junichiro had development at the end of last episode which i found offensive i do remember that um it's been pretty good yeah solid show i'm enjoying it um age had something to mention about carol's voice actress i believe so i'm gonna let him have the floor while I try to uh, scream myself back into uh, being awake. Uh, that's nothing super significant. I was just going to bring up the fact that uh, I actually looked into her voice actress and the fact that she's uh, the same voice actress in both the sub and the dub. It's friggin' Sally Amaki, aka Kiriko, from Overwatch. Right, yeah. Just uh, something I you don't... Of... So, her voice doesn't sound anything like Kiriko in this, but I kind of picked up on the fact that they were very similar. Like, her speaking voice in the show, and then, like, the singing voice in the outro. That's part of how, why I immediately picked up, to, like, oh, this is must be, like, uh, the three main girls all singing the outro was because I immediately picked up, like, that's... Pr I'm pretty damn sure that's supposed to be Carol's voice in the ED. And that caused me to pay attention to the other voices and notice similarities between, like, the performances, even though they're obviously not the same voices. Right. But yeah, the reason I picked up on that so quickly was because, no, it's literally the same voice. It's just a difference of whether she's speaking English or Japanese because she's bilingual. Yeah, it's not something uh, you really see all that often, uh, just in any kind of VA stuff. I mean, there there are a decent amount of bilingual uh, Japanese VAs. It's just extremely rare, if not borderline unheard of, for them to also do the English voices for their character. Right. That's pretty neat. But uh, going forward, uh, the uh, title of this episode has swimsuit in it, so we all know <laughs> what's going to happen, all right? <laughs> uh, let, 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 let's see. Junichiro's going to lose his shit. Uh, Misuzu's going to feel inadequate. Uh, people are going to be oogling other people. Uh, what else? What other uh, tropey nonsense can we throw in here? <laughs> A lot of people are going to be freaking all over Carol. Tomo's going to be super tomboy dressed, like in probably in like board shorts and like a shirt. And but still probably get attention because of her personality. Yes, her personality. It shines through probably. Uh, <laughs> kind of a bummer when you can see the title. Uh when you load up the page here. I, and I already saw the title of the next episode too, which unsurprising that they're going to do one of those episodes, but you know, we'll talk about that next week. <laughs> I imagine the Valley girls will make at least a token appearance here for, uh, seeing Tomo in her tomboy, uh, swimwear to cause more confusion. Yeah. And Hey, maybe the, uh, the, the team, uh, the, the karate club volleyball team that avoided death last week, I mean, they might show up too, right? <laughs> Anybody who didn't die last week, okay? That, that was the crucial thing of last week, was try not to die. <laughs> <laughs> and, and speaking of that, that was one thing I was going to mention, I forgot to mention last week, was uh, you don't really see a, a lot of uh, stuff like this, um, just like kind of like go like really over the top in these shows but like this is the second time in like as many like anime seasons where we've seen like uh characters in not that spy family is as you know 
um, slice of life as this. But uh, you have a character like Yor who breaks what, you know, the human body is capable of. Like when she <laughs> completely just shreds a tennis ball. <laughs> Like to to quote uh to quote what 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 is her name uh Nightfall mm -hmm. she's just like hold on I don't understand what just happened did she just did she just slice through the ball <laughs> so uh that's basically uh, uh Tomo was getting pretty close to that with the volleyball stuff last episode that's for sure so uh, she might not be a completely on yours level but man <laughs> she's about half of yours age so you know she's got time all right <laughs> so so we got two very spooky female uh well she's the protagonist of the show but still like main characters of shows that are uh aren't really in the whole like uh superhuman uh area that are pulling off feats that are absolutely ridiculous uh, so that's that, that's definitely interesting <laughs> but i just wanted to point that out as a uh just like a weird connection going on but um yeah swimsuits i i didn't i don't know what the other skit title was because i kind of glazed over it after i saw swimsuit and i was like well guess we're doing it already huh <laughs> we're going there all right so whatever the other skit is, best of luck living up to whatever happens at the beach, probably, or at a pool or something, whatever they do. <laughs> and well, I mean, once we get obligatory uh, beach episode out of the way, we have to have obligatory uh, hot springs episode. Yeah, we all know how those go. <laughs> Someone gets executed. Yeah, especially if you're in a Persona game, so... Junichiro better hope he doesn't have a persona because then he's going to be in trouble. More trouble than he's already in because the dude is just screwed. <laughs> anyway, I digress. We've rambled enough. Start here. I apologize for myself being out of it. But uh, push some buttons. And, uh, see what's happening with uh, this week. So here goes something. Junichiro's promise. Did he promise not to die of heat stroke? Did you see that? <laughs> I've been there. It sucks. <laughs> Don't train in the summer. It could literally kill you. Becoming as strong as you are. So cool! You don't even have to drive there because the cars float and giant robots are walking the streets. What year does she think this is? Doing that right. Let me see hey, it. Let go. <laughs> it's okay. I got an apology. It's fine. Apologies don't always fix the problem. Good, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Goro, what's going on? What are you doing? Me. Quit terrorizing the new neighbors, or they're gonna move away. Is there something wrong with that? You're from the city, but your face is like a field boy's. Wow. Weird <laughs> burn. <laughs> She likes to pick a fight with anyone over anything. I don't think she's funny at all. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys are becoming such good friends already. Hey, June. And their dynamic help. never changed. Look how big this guy is. Wow. Is that a stag beetle? It's huge. Now control yourself. I don't want to miss the look on Jin's face. I bet it's going to be priceless. Hmm. I've been looking forward to this though. That's all it takes, huh? What'll be fun. Jin, this is for you. Uh, I'm okay, thanks though. Here, you can carry the umbrella. Why don't you just let me hit you one time? He did offer at one point. Crap, June! Why are you sitting over here like a loser? Whoa! Tomo! Get up! Uh, uh, <laughs> Come on, you dumb! The water's waiting! Dude, cut it out! What? Don't hold my arm like that! Why not? I'm what not am I doing? Kidding. She's having so spray. much fun out here, she forgot about the bikini we made her wear. Isn't that ironic? She has no idea what she's doing. <laughs> Keep your tiny creeper hands off of her. 
blinded that torp, I have to run off. June is being so hot. June is being so hot. June is you being good? So hot. I'm sorry for butting you. Is there an echo out here? <laughs> he thought I was your boyfriend. And we wouldn't want that rumor going around, right? He did not just ask me that idiotic question! What is wrong with him? Why is it the worst thing ever for anyone to think maybe we might be a couple? Judy money, I need you! It's fine. I'm about to get back in the water soon anyway. Uh... <laughs> wow, what a sound. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ready to swim? Uh, sure. You know, I, I think I'm becoming more and more one with Mizuzu, and just, just <laughs> this is this is about how I'm feeling about life in general right now. And I I more prefer to be like Tomo, but this is this this right here is where I'm at. Like actually, you know, I, I gotta appreciate the uh, the irony. At some point here. <laughs> But hey, uh, as for competing with the swimsuit uh, side of the episode, I think uh, the first one did a pretty good job. Uh, you know, we got the their first meeting and, you know, all their backstory, you know, what they did as kids. Um, more June character development as to why, you know, he wants to catch up to Tomo, that kind of thing. The promise he made to her, you know, with the, uh, the handheld gaming system, that thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was solid. I enjoyed that. <laughs> Which they didn't actually call name it, but that was a freaking DS. Yeah. Um, we we learned that Tomo thinks that it's the year like twenty three hundred or something, and we're living that Tokyo is like a launching point for the Starship Enterprise, I guess. <laughs> so that was that was a thing. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that was a nice little solid bit of comedy. Um, you know, th that whole skit was solid. I enjoyed it. You know, I think they did the uh, the little kid portion uh, pretty damn well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we already knew uh, Miss Suzu has always been pretty conniving, even when she was a kid. But she bar she's barely changed over the years, really. All right. <laughs> if, if anything, all she's actually done is mellowed out a little bit in her later teens. Yeah. Just a little bit, though, right? Uh, it was uh, interesting to see uh, Tomo's dad has not really changed at all, though, in those 10 years. <laughs> he has slightly less hair. Uh, probably due to his, um, you know, what do you even want to call that? Wife phobia? Is that what we're going to call it? Wife phobia? I don't even know what to call that. Is there a term for that? <laughs> I don't remember if we got an exact time frame. But uh, I want to think the at the moment that the implication is that uh, he got punished by her over this, like scolded by her over this. And that's why he's been in the dojo this whole time, because she said it was like years <laughs> so like he's been in the dojo ever since this flashback yeah i mean when you first when we first meet tomo's mom she does mention like oh these days he's just constantly in the dojo so what if that's the reason that'd be such a weird long game gag <laughs> to figure out it's like is that the reason why you're out there man i was kidding about repaying your honor over the course of like a decade what the heck is wrong with you but they did have that whole thing where uh you know tomo does mention that her dad like can't cope with the fact that you know he's with his wife so i, I don't know i it's it's kind of a weird dynamic considering what they showed off in that first episode that we met the parents and then this one where he was more afraid of her not like oh i can't cope with how like amazing and beautiful and amazing my wife is i can't like be around her because i'm gonna get a nosebleed you know well from what we've seen of them it seems very much like you see this fairly often it's kind of a trope is that the parents uh 
mirror the kids. It very much seems like they were Tomo and June. To where it was a case of she's the stronger one, despite him looking all super buff and being the one in charge of the dojo and stuff like that. The difference in their relationship is probably just going to be the fact that he never managed to get stronger than her, whereas June hasn't get, gotten to that point of giving up yet. Yeah, could be. Just like at some point or another, he developed a phobia of her, despite still being in love with her. Yeah. I think that face tells it all, though. It's, it's pretty good. <laughs> I think it's also more just this circumstance here is why he'd be particularly afraid of her more so than just freaking out about being around her. Yeah, you know... So th this this was a pretty solid skit. I, I enjoyed it. Um, good backstory. June getting character progression two episodes in a row is just I I can't believe they've done this. Just how how could and you? <laughs> we still have no clue how like the rate this is going through the source material. We know the source material is over, but we don't know if they're like doing this expecting it to be like two seasons three seasons just this one season what right so if that's the case that's fine the pacing has been fine so far um but since we are halfway through the season now at this point and this was the start of the second half i'd imagine it'd be two seasons just because it, it 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 i don't think they're you like you misuzu and carol's plan isn't gonna like get there you know, in five more episodes, you know, that would be really fast. And there wouldn't be like, I think there's probably more than enough for like two seasons of full on shenanigans with more of the side characters. You know what I mean? And they did kind of set up stuff with like, um, you know, Carol and the karate club captain, stuff like that. Yeah, um, the, the source material to this was going for like six years ish, though time frames you never really necessarily know because like unless it's like a super series then uh the amount of uh content actually put out in a given time is variable yeah i mean freaking jojo's has been ongoing since like the 80s uh And, like, that's real, really slowed down over the last, like, ten years or so. Yep. Um, and then, I mean, look at freaking uh, Hunter Hunter. So that's a more extreme example. Yeah, freaking, like, years of hiatus, and then suddenly, oh, hey, no, here's another, like, freaking 20 volumes, then years of hiatus again. Yeah. Because that author can really freaking crank shit out when he's actually able to work yeah when his uh can we get that can we get that guy a bionic back can we get krieger on that from archer can can we just get him like some some bionic parts so he can you know get back to do, doing what he does best can we help that guy out how, how has there not been like a gofundme for this man uh i'm pretty sure at some point or another he did say if it ever gets so bad that he feels like he could never he couldn't actually continue the series that his wife is supposed to at very least finish it up for him right uh, or at least like come like come to an ending of some sort which if you don't know his wife is the author for sailor moon yeah but uh anyway as for this you know again solid uh, I think it did a good job uh, setting up just more of their past and stuff like that. Um, first meetings are always interesting. Uh, but, uh, hey. We got the June reaction. Okay. <laughs> Miss Suzu got what she wanted. She, she had she had her probable best day ever, even if she did get uh, sort of slighted by the fact that, you know, nobody hit on her. June sat with her because she doesn't have enough personality or personality. And, well, then hilariousness ensued, which was going to be the whole point of this. <laughs> so Yeah, I, I did call the Valley Girls being there, but uh, we got a significantly more feminine uh, 
swimsuit out of uh, Tomo than I figured, but I was just kind of spitballing off of a general swimsuit episode of just like everyone saying, let's go to the beach, not it being a Carol and Masuzu plot. Right. Well, which these days, uh, what isn't, I guess. <laughs> And uh, we also got another, um, like, Carol face. Though this was pretty good, too. <laughs> the uh, His inner uh, just thoughts of going from Volcano to then the meteor attack that Sephiroth launches at, you know, Midgar. A anyway. <laughs> uh, the, the whole implication there being, you know, he didn't really have to protect Tomo. She would have been able to handle herself. The reason why he said, yeah, I'm Carol's boyfriend, whatever, leave her the hell alone. It's because, well, there is like six guys there and uh, Carol's Carol. I mean, unless she's going to, you know, put that gold bar in a sock and start swinging it around, uh, <laughs> she, she's going to need a little bit of hap. <laughs> Carol's fairly socially inept, especially when it comes to any sort of, like, romance or ludity. Yeah. And then she gets put in a headlock, which... That's, I guess, another thing that we could talk about was the whole thing I was mentioning of, like, Tomo being like your. She literally shot water bullets at them! <laughs> okay? Is she Squirtle now? What's going on? <laughs> I don't even want to do the calculation on what it would take to do that kind of damage with water, okay? I mean, from like, well, I mean, like from force of a human just like flicking it. Like, what what kind of just like psi do you have to like put behind it? You know what I mean? <laughs> it, it literally put marks on their backs. Okay, that wasn't like small damage. That was like, yeah, uh, yeah, that, that that's gonna leave a literal mark, <laughs> literal water bullets. She's halfway to your already. <laughs> <laughs> in before your does that in season two of Spy Family later this year, but she yeah, actually wait, like puts a hole through someone's shoulder or something. <laughs> <laughs> nah, she uh, she needs to kill someone with a pencil. Yeah, we, we could do pencil. I mean, she, she's basically John Wick. <laughs> but uh, yeah, solid episode across the board. Uh, again, yeah, more more feminine swimsuit than I expected from Tomo, but uh, it led to more hilarity and then the generic douchebag beach guy. We all know him. We've all seen him. He's been in like every situation in this you know, kind of situation. So I'm kind of surprised that dude's still around. Uh, <laughs> you would think he'd be sick of getting his ass kicked. <laughs> yeah, no, that's just the stereotypical pickup guy. Yep. You see in a lot of different anime and games and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> Though Tomo's reaction to that guy was uh, pretty damn classic. Uh, I, I did appreciate that He's hitting that on one. me, he's hitting on me. Oh god, he's hitting on me. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe he's hitting on me. Pretty much. <laughs> it's like, no, tell me. How did, how did you reach this conclusion? It's like, would you believe it was your personality? <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't get over it. But yeah. Another solid episode. I, I'm still fairly out of it, but um, can't really really think of anything else to say about this one i enjoyed it it was great it was um, fun yay <laughs> well two things one related to misuzu uh as misuzu pointed out apparently june is a boob guy because we saw that in the flashback too yeah yeah <laughs> i i wonder why uh, but the other thing I was going to mention was just the whole, like, random tangent of the tomboy thing. Being that, like, most American watchers wouldn't really, uh... uh what was the exact word I was going to use, but... Uh, drawing a blank, but... That's really appreciate, but, like... 
it's very different <laughs> for American viewers in this because in America we have a lot of tomboys. Tomboys is just a fairly regular thing. Whereas in Japan, tomboys are actually extremely rare for a number of reasons, both just culturally, that's not really something that you see a lot of. And then also in school, in school, basically all Japanese schools inform uniform policies. So, uh, uh, so you don't really see a lot of, uh, women dressing more masculine yeah that is in fact a cultural thing um but you know it's more in just their traditional traditional media that they do it because you know they don't see it a lot so they kind of probably enjoy writing it you know yeah it's you see that a lot in in all sorts of fiction where it's pe it's fiction people like to write about things that they don't encounter much okay. because it, they're trying to write a fantasy and people generally have a hard time writing a fantasy about stuff that they actually know in real life because it's hard for them to differentiate between reality and the fantasy indeed I'm on the edge of reality and fantasy myself as we speak because, man, do I just want to face keyboard right now. I'm that tired. <laughs> so once again, I apologize for myself being out of it. Hopefully uh, next week will be a, I'll be okay again and I'll have caught up on my sleep. <laughs> yeah, friggin' I barely had sleep. I had much sleep at all this last week or so as well. Last night was like one of the first like full nights of sleep I got. Now it's only because I passed out way early at like 8.30 compared to uh, my usual going to bed at, you know, like 3 or 4 a.m. All right. Um, I just kind of wanted to randomly throw that in here because three and something I asked in this probably should have brought up back in like episode one or two, but I just never really thought to bring it up. Indeed. So, uh, hope everybody's getting some sleep out there. <laughs> but uh, other than that, good week. Solid, uh, solid start to the second half of the season. Uh, t because Crunchyroll and their damn, uh, you know, up next stuff, uh, I, I already saw what the first half of next week is going to be because I saw the damn title by accident. <laughs> um, but it's unsurprising. I mean, we're in the summer. Big shock. We're going to have a summer festival, you know? Who would have guessed? Well, we're weeks behind, so I'm not really spoiling anything. This yeah, point. I mean, <laughs> at this, that that's more or less. A, Plus, it's in the intro. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say that it's also just more kind of a staple of uh, slice of life anime in general. Is pretty much any sort of anything like school life or slice of life has to have a summer festival at some point, All right? It's right up there, you know, with the obligatory beach episode, the obligatory hot springs episode. Yeah, and it's not the episode like genre that matters. It's what happens in it. So, you know, we, we had our speculation about this one and it turned out about what we expected in a way, but still different than other things, you know? Yeah, I'm not saying I should have expected it would be a Carol and Misuzu uh, scheme, but that was wasn't even where my mind went initially. I just went, oh, beach episode, so this, this, and this, probably. No. Yeah. Good old tropey nonsense. Gotta love it. So, uh, I'm gonna hopefully find some sleep before the next time, uh, we do, uh, recording. That's what we're doing uh, right now. In five minutes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, in five minutes. <laughs> Man, I hope not. Is it already Saturday? Because if it's Saturday, I'm screwed. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube, beyond how you're watching, we always appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with us here in the dojo for more anime night in the dojo. And this was Tomo-chan. He's a girl. Season 1, Episode 7. Have a good morning, evening, afternoon. Whatever it is for you. Have a good one. See you next time. Hey everyone, Victoria here. If you enjoyed the video, please consider pushing that subscribe and like button. Any and all support is greatly appreciated. Thanks again for your time, and see you next time.